um, yesterday the world noted the death of noted attorney Sarah Weddington who died at age 86 or 86 76 after having suffered from some health issues in recent years and she was the Texas attorney who took on with uh, fellow attorney Linda Coffey took on a case of a woman who was allegedly raped and pregnant and could not get an abortion in Texas and that was the woman who was dubbed Roe, Jane Roe and we all know who that woman was uh, the name of Norma McCorvey who never had an abortion she had given up kids for adoption and she was kind of a character and there are kind of two sides um, of this woman she was into she had supported abortion rights and then she later uh, recanted and then on her deathbed she said that she uh, was paid to take a an anti-abortion stance so she was kind of a con artist uh, no matter which way you look at it there's a book that's about Norma McCorvey that came out the family row and um, and it and it and it tries to take a balanced approach to her life. Um, as Prager reveals, much of what she said about her life was self-serving, riddled with exaggerations and lies. Yeah, I mean she was con she was a con artist, and yeah, there, all that might be true that she had a lot of lot of tragedy and poverty and you know all that kind of stuff in her life. But anyway, um, but that in that documentary that was a year or so ago yeah it made big headlines when she said she was paid to take an anti-abortion stance well yeah but getting back to Sarah um, she following actually the very first case she took out of law school was this case and you know the vast majority of lawyers never get to argue a case in front of the United States Supreme Court so it was a hell of an honor at her age and she was still in her 20s when Roe v. Wade came down in 1973 I mean she was like she was like 25 years old when she took on this case in 1971 at the begin at, at first so this was quite a damn landmark and later she taught well, she served in the Texas, Texas legislature later on, and then she uh, taught college. She wrote a book called a, Qu a Question of Choice, which I have. Again, it's in the um, store, probably in the storage unit, like every damn thing else. And so, you know, every time I get on this damn thing, this dog wants to bark. So she had a very uh, distinguished career in life um, and the thing that a lot of observers pointed out was her death happened well it was almost close to 50 years since Roe v. Wade was decided but also the attempt uh, by the anti-abortion crowd to overturn it now that the Mississippi uh, law is being challenged in the courts and now the United States Supreme Court is going to attempt to uh, whitewash itself I think on the abortion issue so a lot of people think well a, a row will be overturned and it'll be thrown back to the states or uh, they'll just chip away at it continually because I, I don't remember, and this, I'm not trying to be anti-Catholic, but I forget how many Catholics are on that high court. There's a whole, a whole boatload of them that are on that high court. But um, anyhow, the issue of abortion is before the high court. And anyway, what else can we say about Weddington? She said, speaking to the Guardian in 2017, she says uh, she predicted such a turn of events. If Neil Gorsuch nomination is approved, will abortion bill Ill be illegal the next day? No. 
One ju new judge won't necessarily make much difference, but two or three might. And then, and that was the first of Trump's things, appointees. And then we got treated to uh, Brat Kavanaugh and Amy Coney Barrett. And, and then that may make a difference. Um, it says here, Weddington found her way to Roe v. Wade soon after graduating from the University of Texas. Represented by Weddington and Coffee, Norma McCorvey became the plaintiff known as Jane Roe in Roe v. Wade. Norma be or McCorvey became an evangelical Christian and opponent of abortion. She died in 2017. In a posthumous confession, she said anti-abortion groups paid her to take such a stand stance. She says, and Weddington said, uh, arguing her case in federal court was like going down a street with no street lights. But there was no other way to go, and I didn't have any preconceived notions of, that I would not win. And she said, uh, Henry Wade, the district attorney, unwittingly helped us, she said. At a press conference, he said, I don't care what any court says. I'm going to continue to prosecute doctors who carry out an abortion. There was a procedural rule that said if local elected officials continue to prosecute after a federal court had declared a law unconstitutional, there would be a right to appeal to the Supreme Court. So Henry Wade wasn't that damn smart. He's the Wade in Roe v. Wade. And then she talked about, Weddington talked about how it was really difficult to know where the high court stood on this, on this issue. And we know it was seven to two, um, with uh, Rehnquist and uh, White being the dissenters, I believe, back then. Anyway, that's kind of it. I know I'm kind of rambling here, but yeah, it it was. She was a Sarah Weddington was an important figure, one of the main figures in this saga of of abortion rights, and she did a lot more for women in this country than almost anybody by taking on this case, even though the plaintiff left a little bit to be desired. Um, but anyway, that's all I have to say about it.